So I want to talk to you about how I set up my still life station and the type of lighting I, I use. So first let's talk about the still life. So I have made two different boxes here that I use for my still life. One is um, for small, medium sized still life. This one is for larger still life. And what they are is just masonite that's been cut, hinged together and painted a neutral dark uh, this one is a dark brownish green color. This one is a little bit lighter gray green color. And the reason why I like them on hinges is because I can move this in and out and control some of the light that comes into the box. So for filming, there's a lot of secondary light sources that we use to make sure that we're getting a good picture for you. So I need, to, uh, I need a way to control all that secondary light source coming in. And that's what these, these boxes do. So if I have a still life here, you can see if I pull this way forward, the picture in the oranges, you can see there's a lot of light in the background back here against the shadow of the vessel. If I push the vessel back closer to the background, then it creates a really interesting cast shadow. So that's something you decide whether you want a, a more light in the background or you want that interesting shape of a cast shadow. That's entirely up to you. So, so the reason why I just have three sides and not a top is because I like to be able to have the ability to change that background. So I have lots of different fabric that I use. I have um, poster board and things like that for, for backdrops, but I can just Let's just tuck that back there. And so now I completely changed the background color. Easy. I could change it to yellow. I could change it to blue with just a different type of fabric. So you can see again that the, with the vessel this close, there's all this atmosphere back there and the background is lighter than the shadow colors of the vessel. If I want it even darker, I can take a board or even a canvas and place that on top. And now you can see how much darker that background is and how much more dramatic um, this area is. So if I want more light, I lift it up. If I want really dark, I place that on there. And also the benefit of having the sides on wings is that if I move that in a little bit, it creates a nice diagonal line, a, a diagonal cast shadow that can be a really interesting shape within the painting. So the size of this one is roughly, I think it's about 20 inches square, 20 inches in depth, 20 inches in height, 20 inches in width and around the, uh, around the back. The larger one is probably 36 inches wide by probably 24 to 28 inches tall and 24 inches in depth as well. So when I do a small to medium, I use this size box. If I'm doing a large, I'll, do, I'll use this size box. If I want to do an eye level painting, then I have a, a little shelf that I can put here and I raise up the still eye so it's more at an, an eye level. I used to have a sculpture stand. I think if you've seen my other still life video or still life station video, you know I have a sculpture stand that raises up and down. Um, I'm, I don't have those anymore in this studio. I've, I've got these cabinets that I had put in. So if I do want something a little higher where I'm not looking down on it so much, then I have just a kind of a shelving unit that I put there and, and the still life goes on top of that so it's more of an eye level. So that's how I set up this, the still life. So now let's talk about lighting. So this is just an ordinary photographer's light that I bought from a natural photography studio. I think you can order them online from Amazon or even an art supply store. And the type of bulb that I have in there is a 5000K bulb. So 5000K, what that, re what that K refers to is Kelvin and light is measured in degrees of Kelvin. So the higher the number, the higher the Kelvin number, the cooler the light. So a 2000 K bulb 
will be warmer than a 5000K bulb and a 6500K bulb will be cooler than a 5000K bulb. So again, the higher the number, the cooler the light. So you've all heard the term painting under north light, north light windows. Well, the reason why north light is considered cool is because north is the most uh, consistent light of the day. Of course, we, the sun rises in the east, it sets in the west, and in the, in the wintertime, it's more at a, a, a southern angle as it goes from east to west. So the north light is the most consistent light of the day. And it is not the sun that's coming in and lighting your still life, it's the sky. So here in Utah, we get some pretty gorgeous blue skies. So that blue of that sky, that temperature of the blue, that cool note, is what is influencing the light of my still life. If I have a cloudy day and uh, there's you know clouds and it's there's not the blue, it's still cold with those gray clouds, but it's, it might not be as intense as the blue sky. So the law of nature, what's so amazing about nature is that if you have cool light, you have warm shadows. If you have warm light, you have cool shadows. So when you're painting with me and we're painting under this cool 5000K bulb, we're gonna have cool lights and warm shadows. If you paint with Shanna, and Shanna goes out and paints landscape, she's painting at sunset, that warm light of the sun is what's hitting the trees or the mountains or the grass or the river. And so she'll have warm light and she'll have cool, cooler shadows. So there's this balance in, in nature. And once you can determine what the temperature of your light source is, whether it's warm or cool, then it's easy to figure out what temperature your shadows should be. So here in my studio, I got tired of the cord, tripping over cords and things like that. So I actually mounted a light on my ceiling that is at an angle and it shines down on my setup so I'm no longer tripping over uh, cords and having, you know, trying to put this here and there. The only disadvantage of that is that that light is stationary and I can't move it where the advantage of this is that I could bring it here, I could come more this way, I can come more that way. So I have a little bit more options with a movable light like this. But I got tired of the cords, so I mounted one on, onto my ceiling. So I hope that was informative. I hope you learned something, and I hope you were inspired to paint.